it's uh, no surprise that the number one killer for uh, actually for women is uh, coronary disease. This is the scope of the problem. One woman dies every minute from cardiovascular disease in the United States. It's no surprise that actually um, uh, coronary disease claims a lot of lives, almost a half a million, 300 to 400,000 lives uh, per year in the United States and across the world. Uh, in this slide, it depicts basically the leading causes of, of deaths in women, uh, which is heart disease in this slide. As you can see, the perception that cancer is the number one killer amongst women is probably wrong. And this uh, slide clearly depicts that coronary disease is by far the most uh, common cause of death uh, in women followed by cancer, followed by coronary, by uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, Alzheimer's, and diabetes. And interestingly, with a health survey done uh, amongst uh, women addressing you know, the, the, the causes of, of deaths and the, and the types of cancers that cause uh, um, uh, 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 mortality, it was clearly uh, you know, it's illustrated that actually the types of cancer that women think that actually cause the death is, is breast, where actually it is uh, lung cancer, which is much more common um, associated with, uh, with mortality and women are 15 times more likely to die from cardiovascular disease than uh, breast cancer, cancer, and that constitutes about 1,400 women every day. And this shows basically, this uh, graph uh, shows the difference in, and similarities between men and women as, as, as far as the causes of death, of major deaths uh, between males and females. Uh, males and females share the same cause of death uh, where, uh, where coronary disease and cardiovascular disease constitute the majority of deaths followed by, by cancer. However, there are some dissimilarities uh, between men and women as far as the incidence of chronic lung disease being more common in, in women than in, uh, than in men. It's interesting to see over the last uh, 20, 25 years the uh, trends of mortality with, associated with uh, coronary disease. As you can see, in, in this slide in blue, the line in blue where there's the trend of mortality in men has dropped over the past uh, 10 to 20 years, whereas in women, actually the trend is, is not dropping that much and is still high compared to men. And this shows or underscores the importance of addressing coronary disease in women, whether women are undertreated or there is some kind of different substrate that we're dealing with because definitely um, the, uh, uh, the treatment modalities that exist or the guidelines that exist may not be addressing the uh, gender-specific uh, uh, differences. So it's important we know, uh, apart from the traditional risk factors associated with coronary disease, it's important to know that there are certain risk factors that are somewhat different from men uh, in women. For example, low HDL is more predictive than high LDL in women. Lipoprotein little a can be more predictive in younger women than men, and that's, that's why it's important to address this issue and screen for lipoprotein little a in younger women with coronary disease. Triglycerides can be more predictive in older women, especially when it's greater than 400 milligrams per deciliter. The symptoms as well, and that also underscores the, the importance of screening and diagnosis, um, of diagnosis of coronary disease. The symptoms might be quite different in women than men. And that's also uh, quite important for the clinician to be aware of, where the predominant complaint of chest pain or chest tightness may not be the predominant symptom in women and therefore uh, those women get actually missed um, for uh, coronary disease. And they can present with a host of different symptoms as this slide shows that chest pain only pre is present in 55% of, of patients presenting with coronary disease as opposed to 67 or 70% in men. They present more with fatigue, more with nausea and more with shortness of breath than their male uh, counterparts. And that's important to differentiate sometimes in the, uh, in the differential diagnosis in diagnosis of coronary disease amongst women. How about in women who suffer heart attacks or suffer uh, myocardial infarctions? What's their risk and what's their prognosis after their first uh, myocardial infarction? This slide clearly shows that women at, at more risk of a second heart attack by about 35% as opposed to 
similar incidents of sudden death, both po uh, post-MI, and more disabling heart failure uh, post-MI than their male counterparts, and more incidents of slightly, slightly increase in risk of stroke uh, post-MI. Uh, and what's also interestingly in this slide, as you can see, is that the, the mortality, the in-hospital mortality after myocardial infarction is higher for women than men, especially when they're younger than 74 years of age, as this slide clearly depicts. As you can see, from 50 years of age till about 74 years of age, the mortality for women is almost 3-5% higher as, you com as, as compared to men. 2.9% versus 6.1%, 4, 4, 4 versus 7%, 5%, 9%. And then after the age of 74, the uh, mortality rates post-MI becomes uh, somewhat uh, similar. And that underscores act actually the, the uh, many different aspects in the treatment and the prognosis of MIs in women. Again, this is, shows the survival after MI is lower in women within uh, six months uh, in, the, in, uh, in the RESTGATE study of about 331 women and 1,120, uh, 1,129 men. The six-month survival after the first myocardial infarction was lower in women, is about 74% versus 89% uh, with a statistical p-value of less than 0 0.001. So is there a difference in outcome between men and women treated by primary PCI, and is it age-dependent as well? So if we've seen that younger, younger women, less than 65 years of age, were at higher or have a higher mortality risk at one year compared with younger men uh, with adjusted risk ratio about 1.68%, uh, uh, that's 68% higher incidence of, of mortality. There was no difference in mortality risk between older women and older men and younger women showed less obstructive coronary disease than younger men with a higher TME3 flow and angiography. So that's, we've all been taught in medical school and fellowships that the TME3 flow is very important after you know, uh, coronary intervention or PCI or after a stent is, is placed. But in women, this, you know, this paradox exists. Despite good flow rates, despite good TME3 flow um, after the angioplasty, yet women tend to do actually worse than men. So where is the problem here? Is there something that we're not addressing? And the Cadillac trial actually showed it, you know, demonstrated it quite clearly, where the, the, t the rate of TME3 flow between men and women post-MI, post-intervention, was almost identical. 95% versus 97%. Yet the mortality was higher in women than men. It turns out, actually, the TME3 flow was a very not sensitive predictor of, of actually of reperfusion. As you can see from the Cadillac trial, which showed that actually the myocardial blush is more predictive of uh, survival and more important to achieve than the actual TME3 flow. As you can see in men, the myocardial blush difference grades between zero, one, or two, or three, the dramatic change in mortality rates was not much different, whereas in women, a blush of 96% versus a blush grade of 0 and 1, 87%, there was a dramatic difference in mortality with a p-value of 0 0.0017. And that probably underscores the, of the microcirculation uh, in women and maybe of the diffused nature of disease that may be associated in women with coronary disease. In the pool patient analysis, of the replace acuity horizons, which included about 14,784 patients. It looked at mortality at one year, and it was quite high for women, 3.7% versus 2.7%, with the independent predictors being mainly ST elevation myocardial infarction and the 30-day bleeding. So here, actually, being a woman or gender-specific um, issues were actually were counted out in the uh, multivariate analyses and showed actually the most important predictor with ST elevation MI and the 30-day bleeding. And again, in the Gasto trial and several trials, acute coronary syndrome trials, women had a two-fold increase in normal coronary arteries in the setting of an acute coronary syndrome, non-ST elevation MI and ST elevation MI. Despite that have less aggressive disease, our normal coronary arteries 
uh, women with acute MIs or with acute coronary syndrome tended to fare worse. So that raised a lot of you know, questions, whether you know, women tend to be undertreated. Are we following the guidelines with, with women? Are we in implementing proper guidelines when it comes to management? That has been addressed over the last uh, few years, and there has been some improvement in the implementation of guidelines in women, and that translated into an improvement in outcome. This was in women treated with improperly treated with, with uh, not following the guidelines, yet when guidelines were implement, implemented properly in women, yet remained the sex gap in blue, uh, suggesting more work is needed to understand this sex-specific path pathophysiology that leads to improvement outcome in men and women. Again, this shows the in-hospital and late mortalities rates in women versus men following mostly elective PCIs. As you can see in this slide, the in-hospital mortality was quite higher in most of the studies, although women were underrepresented in these studies, between 20 and 35 percent, and that's normal for all studies, and these are the issues that we deal in, the, in, 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 in trials where women are underrepresented, and that's why we don't fully understand the pathophysiology that goes on. However, the late mortality was quite similar, as you can see, in this slide. So the in-hospital mortality was quite high for women following elective PCI, whereas late mortality was different. So there was something acutely happening um, in, uh, in women uh, post-PCI. So these issues or these problems might be arising from, is it women tend to be older when they present with acute coronary syndromes or for elective PCIs and therefore associated comorbidities? Are they ha do they have more diabetes and therefore more disease burden and therefore more restenosis? Do they have small coronary arteries and that result in restenosis? And as we know probably from the interventional cardiologist, women tend to have more distinct coronary tortuosities that make it quite difficult for uh, equipment to track and delivery of the devices and therefore vessels are more prone to dissections and therefore may not achieve an excellent result. Hemodynamics, as we know, women tend to have more heart failure with preserved ejection fraction as diastolic dysfunction and bleeding complications. As you can see in this slide, the, in the Cardiovascular Research Foundation, uh, in patients coming in or women coming in with elective angioplasties, the incidence of diabetes in women was much higher than men. As you can see in this slide, 19% of men had diabetes versus 37% across most of age groups. So we know that the incidence of diabetes in women were definitely had a higher incidence of diabetes in patients admitted with elective PCIs. As well as in the diabetics as well, women tended to have actually low, uh, higher mortalities uh, this, uh, uh, in, in different uh, to men. As you can see in this slide, minus 13% where actually women tended to do worse and men actually improved by about 23% in the diabetic uh, population. We also know uh, this has been shown in many different registries and trials that uh, women present with more unstable angina but less severe disease on angiography. We don't know the exact extent or the explanation behind that but there are some speculation that this could be because of spasm, low hemoglobin, or microvascular dysfunction, or there's a specific entity of microvascular dysfunction in women or female pattern of heart disease. They present with more of angina after follow-up, after revascularization, despite similar rates of uh, incomplete revascularization, so we don't know the reasons behind that. They undergo fewer repeat PTCAs because their symptoms post-PCI is not reliable, and they tend to have actually more heart failure basically the more diastolic dysfunction. And this, what I've mentioned in the, in the past uh, few slides, is basically the, the questions that we have or the problems that we have with, um, with women undergoing, coronary, undergoing PCI. And this like clearly depicts the meta-analysis of uh, vascular complications that occur in women 
versus men undergoing PCIs. And across the board of all trials, as you can see, the vascular complications is much higher in women than in men. And most of these vascular complications are related to bleeding. And, and, and also in the REPLACE uh, trial, you can see that actually the vascular complications were higher, 4.1% versus 1.9% in patient receiving heparin and a glycoprotein inhibitor. However, in patient receiving bivalerudin, the incidence was still higher, 1.6% versus 0.6%. Please, I don't have the timer here, so please uh, um, tell me if I'm uh, uh, if run out of time. Um, therefore, the predictors in the REPLACE trial was the fact that actually heparin and 2B3 inhibitors were associated with a high incidence of bleeding and age and uh, uh, CVA. In the pool, the patient analysis of replace acuity horizons, also 14,000 patients, it was clearly shown that actually uh, bleeding was associated with a higher event rate with um, heparin and glycoprotein 2B3 inhibitors as, um, as opposed to bevarudin, and the the mortality actually was lower in the patients in the women receiving by the rudin. And the impact was much greater in women than in men. And the difference between glycoprotein inhibitors and heparin between men and women was not that dramatic. However, in, in, in women, the difference was quite dramatic, underscoring the incidence and the, and the uh, associated bleeding in PCI with ordinary infractionated heparin and, um, and glycoprotein inhibitors and maybe a different approach to PCI in women with different agents, with different antithrombotic regimen may be indicated, maybe sh should be looked at. There's now ample evidence, as I mentioned, that bleeding is more common in females post-PCI, and there's so many risk factors for it. Is it the body mass index? Is it the platelet biology? Are it the risk factors, the vessel size, the axis size anatomy, or the pharmacotherapy that needs to be addressed in the future? So what can be done to reduce bleeding? As I mentioned, you know, different anticoagulation regimen, maybe a radial approach, maybe the best way of doing it. How about post-PCI? Is there a difference in outcome between men and women post-PCI um, and with regards to death and MI? As you can see from the old bare metal stents to the newer generation drug looting stents and the newer, newer generation drug looting stents, we've made actually important strides of um, cumulative uh, incidence of MACE, 12.8% with the bare metal stents, with the newer generation drug eluting stents of about 9.2% of MACE. And the TLR actually was dramatically improved even with the newer generation drug eluting stents. And the gender-based outcomes in the TAXIS-5 or TAXIS-4 trial showed that actually the dependent predictors of target vessel revascularization was mainly the presence of uh, diabetes, the number of stents being used as well, and the body surface area to a certain extent, and the reference vessel diameter were independent predictors of target vessel revascularization. So, interesting as well, in this study showed that uh, one although this was a single center study uh, that showed women actually did better with the Zion stent than the packet axle stent, indicating that maybe different agents may be uh, playing a role in patients uh, with coronary disease, specifically in women. For the sake of time, I'll skip some slides. I show this slide, and I may, this may give a shuckle, actually, to some of the audience or bring us uh, you know, somewhat a laugh. Um, but uh, the reason of, for this slide, I wanted to point out, basically, that there are gender-specific pathophysiology, whether it's a curse or whether it's a blessing. That needs to be, I think, to be uh, underscored, underlined. However, the full understanding of the pathophysiology in relation to the reproductive system is needed to actually to be discerned, to be understood in order really to deliver um, uh, specific gender um, uh, modalities. And therefore, I think it's important to address the, uh, the issues with coronary disease and the uh, pathophysiology might be quite different. This just basically shed some light into the female pattern of uh, coronary disease or female pattern of, the, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of heart disease. And this slide is a very important slide where if you just focus on the left bars, this is the patients actually with coming in with um, suspected coronary disease. 
and these patients underwent coronary flow reserves uh, measurement by, uh, by the coronary flow uh, Doppler wire. Just pay attention in, in this subset of patients who have actually coronary disease and in the white bar where actually had no coronary disease, the irrespective in the, of the angiogram did, that did not demonstrate any coronary disease, patients with a poor or a lower coronary flow reserve actually had a higher percentage of major adverse cardiovascular events, irrespective of their actually of the coronary disease status. And this slide de depicts exactly what's going on in, in women. Uh, you can see in this angiogram, there's actually no stenosis, whereas in the I IVUS ultrasound, this is you know, a 3.1 millimeter and a 3.1 millimeter. However, there is diffuse atheroma in this, in this uh, patient uh, subset. And that might be the reason why we see a, a, re a reduction in the coronary flow reserve despite that the angiogram is quite, is quite clean. And that what actually prompted um, the WISE study to um, delineate the female, female pattern of ischemic heart disease might be actually at play and, and should not be overlooked when addressing uh, patients uh, and women with uh, coronary disease. Only one minute. So in conclusion, differences between men and women are real. Women are older, have more diabetes and hypertension, but relatively less extensive CID. In ACS and AMI, patients or women tend to do actually as good as uh, their counterparts with PCI. Ischemic outcomes of women with coronary, acute coronary syndromes, including acute myocardial infarction, are not similar to those to men. Still delays to treatment, implementation of guidelines, need more insight into the implications of the microvascular dysfunction, and mortality higher is higher in younger age group and women are more susceptible to bleeding and vascular complications and causes likely related to smaller body size, a re relative overdosing of unfractured heparin and the use of 2B3 inhibitors, and bavilirudin clearly offers benefit to this risk, uh, to this uh, high risk in this regard in this high risk population. Thank you.